collapsing cosmoses. Damborg glued each of his six eyes to the lenses of the cosmoscope. His nasal tentacles were orange with fear, and his antennae buzzed hoarsely as he dictated his report to the operator behind him. It has come, he cried. That blur in the ether can be nothing less than a fleet from outside the space-time continuum we know. Nothing like this has ever appeared before. It must be an enemy. Give the alarm to the Intercosmic Chamber of Commerce. There's no time to lose. At this rate they'll be upon us in less than six centuries. Hakni must have the chance to get the fleet in action at once. I glanced up from the Windy City grab bag, which had beguiled my inactive peacetime days in the supergalactic patrol. The handsome young vegetable, with whom I shared my bowl of caterpillar custard since earliest infancy, and with whom I had been thrown out of every joint in the intradimensional city of Castoya, had really a worried look upon his lavender face. After he had given the alarm, we jumped on our ether bikes and hastened across to the outer planets on which the chamber held its sessions. Within the great council chamber, which measured twenty-eight square feet, with quite a high ceiling, were gathered delegates from all of the thirty-seven galaxies of our immediate universe. All Stoff, president of the chamber and representative of the milliner's Soviet, raised his eyeless snout with dignity and prepared to address the assembled multitude. He was a highly developed protozoan organism from Nov Kos, and spoke by emitting alternate waves of heat and cold. Gentlemen, he radiated, a terrible peril has come upon us, which I feel I must bring to your attention. Everybody applauded riotously, as a wave of excitement rippled through the variegated audience those who were handless, slithering their tentacles together. He continued, Hakni, crawl upon the dais. There was a thunderous silence, during which a faint prompting was heard from the dizzy summit of the platform. Hakni, the yellow-furred and valorous commander of our ranks through numerous installments, ascended to the towering peak inches above the floor. My friends, he began, with an eloquent scraping of his posterior limbs, these treasured walls and pillars shall not mourn on my account. At this point, one of his numerous relatives cheered. Well do I remember when... Holstoff interrupted him. You have anticipated my thoughts and orders. Go forth and win for the dear old intercosmic. Two paragraphs later found us soaring out past innumerable stars toward where a faint blur half a million light-years long marked the presence of the hated enemy whom we had not seen. What monsters of malformed grotesqueness seethed out there among the moons of infinity we really didn't know, but there was a malign menace in the glow that steadily increased until it spanned the entire heavens. Very soon we made out separate objects in the blur. Before all my horror-stricken vision areas there spread an endless array of scissors-shaped spaceships of totally unfamiliar form. Then from the direction of the enemy there came a terrifying sound which I soon recognized as a hail and a challenge. An answering thrill crept through me as I met with uplifted antennae this threat of battle with a monstrous intrusion upon our fair system from unknown outside abysses. At the sound, which was something like that of a rusty sewing machine, only more horrible, Hackney too raised his snout in defiance 
radiating a masterful order to the captains of the fleet. Instantly the huge spaceships swung into battle formation, with only a hundred or two of them many light-years out of line.